The graphics card battle between red and green just entered a new level as recent rumors points to Nvidia now bumping up the memory configuration for at least two upcoming Emperor based GPUs before launch and I think it's safe to say guys that Nvidia is doing what they can to counter for what's coming. They know that there is a red monster waiting to be unleashed. Now upcoming Oryx 6900 XT aka Big Navi is said to be blessed with 16 gigs of VRAM which means that Nvidia need at least 16 to beat it so if they respond with a 20 and a 24 gigabyte variant yeah that would show the world that they're not playing around anyway things are ramping up quickly let's kick this video off by looking at the launch schedule according to wjm47196 from ship hell now this guy shouldn't need any explanation at this point but basically it's been right many times before anyway according to wjm nvidia is launching ampere with three cards and it should be said that goes right in line with pre previous leaks. First up we got the 24 GB beast, lastly we got a card with 20 GB worth of VRAM. Now, all these three cards are said to be introduced at the announcement on September 1st. Anyway let's take a quick look at the specifications, we can see that all cards are being based on the GA102 GPU, said to be the flagship GPU for the series. And this basically means that Nvidia is dropping the best they got right from the start, to then follow up with the mid and entry later down the road. Now in case you're curious, when the rest of Ampere is coming out, I covered that in a separate video, which is linked up down below. So while there's a lot of things making sense here, there's still a few bits and pieces we still want answered, like pricing for example. How much is Ampere going to cost? Well that is the million dollar question, right? Yeah, we gotta touch on pricing in a second. Anyway, I wanna stay on memory for a second, cause just a few hours ago, a leaked picture said to be upcoming RTX 3090 was leaked, and as we can see, it does seem like Nvidia is giving this card a ton of memory and from what we can tell there seems to be a total of 12 DRAM modules on each side of the PCB meaning that the 3090 might as well get as much as 24 gigs of VRAM. In terms of power consumption, TP Top Titan, Ampere and RTX 3090 are both said to be quite power thirsty. In fact leaks indicate that Nvidia is introducing a new 12 pin power connector set to handle up to 300 150 watts of power. Now taking a look at the leak 3090 we can see that this one features three 8 pin connectors. This to me indicate that the 12 pin connector might not be happening after all or it could just mean that Nvidia used the 12 pin connector on the reference cards only. As this leak PCB is said to come from a iGame GeForce RTX 3090 Vulcan X graphics card. Now taking a deeper look at this picture there's said to be a secondary ship that seemed to be featured right underneath the GPU itself here. The leaker placed an Intel CPU on top of the ship so that we can't see what it is but it looks like Nvidia may be offering a secondary ship that is not part of the GPU die itself and this ship might handle a set of specific workloads which we aren't 100% sure what it might be but given that Nvidia is doubling down on ray tracing this ship could be specifically for ray tracing only. Anyway we're now starting to realize that this card is going to generate a ton of power and two very popular leakers also strengthens these rumors even more as they recently made it clear that the top ampere cards are getting 20 shokes which is a lot. Now these shokes guys are often referred to coils or inductors and these are the small square things you find as part of the VRMs on the GPU and in order to even see them you need to take off the GPU cooler. You usually find these lined up like this, here's a naked 1080 for example and as we can see it got 6 shokes and together they basically blocking high frequency alternating current while allowing low frequency direct current signals to pass. Having more of these usually means that there is more power to regulate. Imagine having 20 of these. As a reference, here is a naked RTX Titan and as we can see, this one got 16. Now because the reference cards are getting you know, very small irregular boards, Nvidia is forced to put components on both sides of the PCB. It seems to be a very interesting design and you definitely have to give Nvidia credits for being so innovative. I think it's also important to say that Nvidia already seemed to got MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, etc. on board and so in case you're not interested in the 
these reference cards, you should be able to find an Asus Strix variant of the 3080 for example at launch. There's an image of a Zotac RTX 3080 that was leaked just a few hours ago. I have talked about gaming performance in previous videos but in case you missed it, upcoming RTX 3090 scored almost 10k points in 3D Mark times by Extreme, which uh, makes it roughly 50% more powerful than 820 ATDI, and the 3080 scored almost 8600, which makes it about 30-35% faster than the 2080 Ti flagship. Now keep in mind the cars being tested are most likely engineering samples with immature drivers, so we should expect to see even better performance for the final variants. My gut feeling tells me what I'm hearing about these huge power thirsty GPUs, yeah that tells me that Ampere will be nothing but cheap, but here is some predictions. Yeah, Anyway guys, this whole thing is going down on September 1st. And this event will be hosted by no other than Jensen himself. It's supposed to be a pre-recorded digital event similar to the Ampere A100 event we saw earlier. Again, we do expect to see three top tier cards and we expect these to be available on either September 9th or September 17th. Now, which card are you looking forward to the most? Down below you find everything worth knowing about both Ampere and Nvidia's Big Navi. 